Okay, my clock's ticking, so I guess I'm going to get started. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for taking 25 minutes-ish of your time to spend with me today. There's a legal disclaimer, you're all duly deputized. Okay, let me start like this. As I was preparing for this presentation, I came across this poem. A mighty wind blew night and day. It stole the oak tree's leaves away. It snapped its boughs and pulled its bark until the oak tree was tired and stark. But still, that oak tree stood its ground while other trees fell all around. The weary wind gave up and spoke. How are you still standing, Oak? My name is Charles Anemi, and I'm with Solidime. And I'd like to talk to you about storage sustainability. Or, to connect it to my little poem, Mighty Oaks from Little Acorns Grow. So some of you may be familiar with Solidime, some of you may be not so. So I'm going to endeavor to do two things today. One, I'm going to spend a few minutes to tell you about the company. And two, I'm going to share with you one of the little acorns that we think can have a giant oak-like impact. So let me start with Solidine. The company was launched in 2021 around December, actually it was exactly December 29th of 2021. So we are exactly about 10 months old. It is actually from the merger of SK Hynix NAND business and Intel's NAND SSD business. It is backed by SK Group with the ambition of driving storage innovation and manufacturing scale for our industry. Solidarm is headquartered in San Jose. We have about 2,000 employees located in 20 locations around the world. Now I have to tell you, being here at OCP, I really felt like a tiny acorn because you have server manufacturers, you have CPU manufacturers, you have data center operators, and we are a storage company. We make an ingredient device for many others to use. So you might wonder exactly how does this little acorn actually impact in a big oak kind of way. Well, you have to understand that we have a pedigree coming from Intel and SK Hynix that allows us to draw on 50 plus years of combined experience. And those innovations have been in all aspects of the storage industry, from form factor development, to software evolution, to media acceleration. And we take all of those learnings and we apply them to this community of OCP. We actually were one of the founding members of OCP. And you can see from the green highlights, since our founding of OCP as a member, a lot of our innovations have been in the space of storage scalability and density. Because those are the things that, as a little acorn, we can do that has a big impact. But when you think about sustainability, as a company, small or not, we can do more. As an industry, we can also do more. Based on estimates and general industry consensus, about 85 to 90% of the existing storage devices in most data centers are hard disk drives. Many of you are familiar with the fact that hard disk drives relative to SSDs consume more power, take up more space, require more better cooling solutions. So all of those things are known. Would it surprise you to know that they also increase and contribute to the amount of waste, or specifically e-waste, that is generated? 
In 2019, the world as a whole generated 53.3 metric tons of e-waste. I don't know about you, I had to look that up because that number sounds huge. <laughs> and I had to get something to make sense of it. It is exactly 131.15 times the weight of the Golden Gate Bridge, give or take. That's a lot of e-waste. Data center operators, which account for nearly half of the worldwide demand for storage, every three to five years recycle or change out or replace and dispose of their storage environment. That's about 22 million drives a year. As an industry, we can do better. But as a storage provider, we can also do better. So how do we allow mighty oaks to grow from little acorns? We use and we believe that sustainable storage is something that we as a supplier can provide through creating more dense storage. Because that little acorn can continue to drive dramatic sustainability changes. And what I'm going to endeavor to show you in the next few minutes is exactly how we believe we can accomplish that. I, I will spend a little bit of time to explain. So one of the things that I want to talk about is the fact that as a supplier, we have to own our CO2 emissions footprint. We have to do the things that we can to minimize our own impact. Uh, what I would have shown you was a comparison of our manufacturing process for a th three bits per cell TLC drive compared to a four bits per cell QLC drive. Within our manufacturing process, changing nothing at all other than simply manufacturing a QLC drive versus a TLC drive, we can reduce our own CO2 emissions by 30%. Again, scale, context matters. So 30% reduction in CO2 emissions from a manufacturing of SSDs, what exactly does that translate to? According to the EPA, the number one contributor of CO2 emissions in the United States is the fossil fuel combustion for transportation, essentially gasoline, the cars you and I drive. In 2020, the average fuel economy for a car across all manufacturers was 25 miles per gallon. If you were to drive a 25 MPG vehicle for 10,000 miles a year, which, by the way, is low for California, you would generate 3.5 million CO2 emissions. That 30% savings that I talked about is the equivalent of taking 13 vehicles off the road for one full year. Now, that may seem relatively small to you. Just remember, mighty oaks from little acorns grow. So let's keep going. I want to give you an example of exactly how you can apply this 30% manufacturing benefit of reducing our CO2 footprint to actually have downstream implications. If you attended some of the keynotes this morning, DJ actually talked about the greenhouse gas protocol. And he referenced the fact that it defines scope one, scope two, and scope three. If you didn't attend, don't worry. I'll recap it for you real quick. Scope 1 emissions are the emissions we directly generate. Don't do that. Scope 2 emissions are the indirect emissions involved in our productive activity of creating an SSD. Scope 3 emissions are the ones that are created from the value chain that continues to consume that productive output. The point that DJ made this morning was that as a data center operator, which from his perspective, Meta absolutely is, 
they've done a fantastic job of controlling their scope one and scope two things, the direct and indirect things. The next biggest challenge for them is scope three, all of the other things that are part of their value chain. He called it an inversion because from his point of view, he's done everything he can. He now needs the rest of the ecosystem, the community, to do a better job. As a supplier, the inversion is opposite for me. My scope one and scope two emissions are exactly the scope three emissions that DJ was talking about. So the more I take on that responsibility, the better it is for all the other data center operators when they consume storage devices. So what I want to do is give you an example, and I will use a streaming service. Now, don't, don't hate me. I recently started binge watching Stranger Things. I know, I'm late. Forgive me. I, I got there, though. I got there. But I did start late. Solidime collaborated with a tier one provider of streaming services. And essentially, a streaming service is like a content delivery network. There's a source where all the stuff is kept. And then from that source to your device or my home, as I'm trying to watch Stranger Things, is usually a mid-tier, which caches the source, and then an edge server tier, which caches the source closest to me. So that Stranger Things would be on my edge service, but if you're not watching that, it probably won't be on yours. So that's essentially what a streaming service is. It's a CDN, or Content distribu Delivery Network. In partnering with one of these top tier providers, we looked at their existing environment. And what they are doing is essentially trying to balance the user experience of throughput with the cost that we're willing to pay for that service. And the existing solution they were using consisted of TLC SSDs, three bits per cell, plus a lot of hard disk drives to balance the cost equation. In partnering with this tier one provider, we came up with a solution that involved all QLC SSDs, four bits per cell. Remember, that QLC generates 30% less scope one and scope two emissions from our side as a supplier. When that tier one provider used that solution to deliver their CDN, they were able to realize a 5x reduction in footprint because they no longer needed quite so many servers and drives to deliver the same, and in some cases, better throughput for that service. So that is one scope three benefit for us, and probably a scope two benefit for them. But it gets better. With reduced footprint in the data center, they also get an immediate boost in power consumption, or more correctly, reduction in power consumption, and thermal efficiency. They no longer have to cool quite as many drives heating. They no longer have to run quite as many servers. That 5x reduction in footprint translated to about a 4.6x reduction in power consumption. Now, you, by now you know that I need to put things in context, otherwise it doesn't make any sense to me, right? So the original solution that this content provider had consisted of TLC drives and a lot of HDDs, as I mentioned. And we calculated with their support that that system was generating 6.46 watts per terabyte. They had an overall 480 terabyte CDN network, I believe. 6.4 terabyte, uh, 6.4 watts per terabyte. When we switched to the all QLC solution, it was a sipping 1.4 watts per terabyte. Which again, you might say, well, that sounds nice. Six is bigger than one, so big deal, Charles. Yeah. It's a little acorn, but let me give you the oak size implication. The average US home, according to the government's EPS standard, consumes about 1,223 watts per day. That's how much energy it takes to power the average US home. 
That reduction in power savings from 6.46 watts per terabyte to 1.4 watts per terabyte is the equivalent of powering 120 average size homes for a day. Or if you want to get more personal, it can power your house for four months. All because mighty oaks from little acorns grow. So the last one I want to talk about is that bit of that factoid from earlier about the amount of e-waste that we generate. So you recall that I mentioned the 53.3 million metric tons of e-waste that are generated and connected that to the fact that data center providers contribute to that by some, something to the order of 22 million drives every day that is disposed, every year that is disposed of. So how does more dense storage impact that particular piece of the story? When we com connect that back to our CDN example, the original solution comprised of over 4,000 drives. There were 3,972 hard disk drives, 662 TLC SSDs. Many of you are already familiar with the fact that because of the higher failure rate of HDDs, they, are, they need to be replaced more often, which already adds to the maintenance cost, but also has a disposal impact. By switching to a QLC solution, not only did they benefit from our 30% lower manufacturing footprint from a carbon perspective, not only did they get a 5x reduction in data center space, not only did they get a 4.5 reduction in power, but they also went from more than 4,000 drives to 1,392. That's over 3,000 drives they don't have to dispose of. I want to tell you about another industry initiative called the Circular Drive Initiative, which is trying to find second life for drives that age out of data centers. Every three to five years, like I mentioned, most data centers, because of the scale, will cycle through their drives. You might be surprised to know, or maybe you're not, that many of them have to shred or crush those drives. They cannot put them out to be reused. Why? Why? Because you and I won't let them. The data they store on them is our information, and they take the protection of our data very seriously. So because of that, they won't trust the disposal of those drives to just anyone. And so they'll rather crush it than give it a second life. And as the gentleman on the stage spoke just a minute ago, the fact that they've aged out doesn't mean they're no longer useful. They're still have a lot of endurance left in them. The reason they do that is because we as storage providers need to provide them with more capabilities like secure erase and other methods to effectively sanitize the data on the drive so that they can actually be comfortable you removing your data and my data and know that it will not be accessible to anybody else after it's been erased and they can then repurpose it for a second life. Many of those drives still have two, three, five years of life left in them. If you could repurpose them for some other function, like setting up the digital network of a developing nation, they would delay the need to purchase so we don't have to produce and incur another CO2 footprint impact. They would get the benefit of these drives you could extend the life use of those drives and thereby expanding the sustainability of the product. These are all possible because the mighty little acorn of more dense storage allows these ginormous downstream impact. Now, Solidime as a newer entrant 
to the storage industry, at least in name. I did mention we have about 2,000 employees in 20 locations around the world, so we're not quite that small. But relative to some of these major players involved in all of this activity, it can be daunting to see how our little piece can contribute. But this is part of what emboldens us as a company. We use our size to live our purpose, to expand the possibilities that fuel human advancement. And we believe that our ability to continuously and consistently invest in more dense storage is going to allow us to have a greater impact despite our acorn size in this oakish forest. One example of that, for those of you who had the chance to see, was the fact that we introduced the first, the world's first functioning five bits per cell technology at the Flash Memory Summit this past August. That's the level of commitment we have to driving storage scale and density for the betterment of the overall industry. So I want to finish, actually, where I started. A mighty wind blew night and day. It stole the oak tree's leaves away. It snapped its boughs and stripped its bark until the oak tree was tired and stark. But still that oak tree stood its ground while other trees fell all around. The weary wind gave up and spoke how are you still standing, oak? Would you like to know how the oak tree responded? Yeah, I, I'm sure you would. I, I've kind of kept you waiting long enough. This is the oak tree's response. I have deep roots in the earth. They have been growing stronger since my birth. You'll never touch them, for you see, they are the deepest part of me. Just like oak trees evolve from little acorns by building deeper roots into the earth that will then sustain them and allow them to withstand mighty wind, all of us involved in this digital economy consume natural resources. We have a responsibility to safeguard those and replenish them in order for us to be able to also withstand the mighty winds that come, not only for the benefit of our planet, but also for the benefit of the communities that you and I get to live in. So I hope you have gained a little bit of insight into how something as small as storage applied at scale can have massive impact. I invite you to join me, Solidime, the rest of the storage industry, as we try to build deeper roots through high-density storage. Thank you very much for your time.